Who's there? Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo, eat. You come most carefully upon your hour. It is now struck twelve. Get you to bed, Francisco. To this relief, much thanks. Tis bitter cold, and I am sick at heart. Have you had quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, arrival of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand, who's there? Friends to this ground. And leechmen to the Dane. Give you good night. Hello, Bernardo. Hey. What, it's Horatio there. A piece of him. Well, come, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What, has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says it's but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him touching this dreaded sight to I have seen of us. Tut, tut, will not appear. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story with what we've two nights seen. Good, now sit me down and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made his course to loom that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating one, Peace. saw it. Break thee off, look where it comes again. The same figure like the king is dead. Thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio. Looks it not like the king? Who's like it, Horatio? Who's like it harrows me with fear and wonder? It would be spoke to. Question it, Horatio. What art thou that usurps this time of night, together with the fair and warlike form in which the majesty of very Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven, I charge thee, speak. I charge thee, speak. It is offended. See, it stalks away. It's gone. I do not answer. Oh, now, Horatio, you tremble and look pale. Not this something more than fantasy? I think you ought. Oh, my God, I might not disbelieve. Were it not for the sense, will it drew about you by no eye? Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. Thus twice before, and just at this dead hour, with warlike stalk, hath he gone by our watch. of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we as twere with a defeated joy, in equal scale, weighing delight and dole, taken to watch. Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair aloft. For all, our thanks. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be mine offer, not thine asking? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth than is thy father to the throne of Denmark. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? Dread, my lord, your leave in favor to return to France from whence, though willingly, I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now I must confess that duty done my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France and bow them to your gracious leave and favor. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laborsome petition, and at last upon his will I sealed my hard consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine, and thy best graces spend it at thy will. And now, my cousin Hamlet and my son. A little more than kin, and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on me? Not so, my lord, I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. 
do not forever with thy veil and lid seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone mine inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passes show. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. It is sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father, and that father lost, lost him. And the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrows. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. For what we know must be, and is as common as any the most vulgar thing to sense. Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? We pray you throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne. <laughs> For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. We beseech you bend you to remain here, in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her pleasure. Stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall, in all my best, obey you, madam. Why, to the loving and fair reply, be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling on my heart. In grace whereof no dot and health that Denmark drinks today, but the great cannons to the clouds shall tell, and the king's rouse, the heaven shall sound again, re-speaking earthly thunder. <laughs> Come, away! melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God! How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fire! Ah, oh, fire! Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. But two months dead, and not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this, Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother, that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember? Why, she would dote on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. Yet within a month, let me not think on frailty, thy name is woman. Within a month, there yet those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, ain't she out? God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with mine uncle, my father's brother. But no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her golden eyes she married. Oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheep. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue.
Hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you. Well. Horatio? Or I do forget myself. The same, my lord, and your poor servant, Evan. Oh, sir, my good friend. I'll change that name with you. Marcellus, I am very glad to see you. But what in faith make you from Wittenberg? A true disposition, good my lord. I would not hear your enemy say so. Now, shall you do mine ear that violence to make it trust her of your own report against yourself? I know you are no truant. But what is your fair Nelson of? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's brother. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift. Thrift, racer, the funeral baked meats that coldly furnish forth the merry table. But I had met my dearest foe in heaven, ere I had ever seen that day, Horatio. My father. Yet thinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. Was a man. Take him for all in all, I shall not look upon his like again. I think I saw him yesterday night. So? Who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Seizing your admiration for a while with a tent here, till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. <laughs> Necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, in the trifling of his favor, halted a fashion and a toy and blood no more. No more but so. Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, and now no soil nor coddle doth besmirch the virtue of his will. But you must fear his greatness weighed, his will is not his own. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain. With two creed and dear, you list his songs. Don't lose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. <sighs> Be wary, then. Best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep his watchman to my heart. But good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do. Show me the steep and thorny way to heaven. Was like a puffed and reckless libertine, yourself the primrose path of dalliance tread, and wreck not your own reed. Oh, fear me not. <laughs> if my father comes, I stay to her. <sighs> Occasion smiles upon second leave. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame, the wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with you. And these few precepts in thy memory, see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. And be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. And take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. And prostrate thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gory. For the apparel oft claims the man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. For no not loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. This, above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season this indeed. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time invites you. Go, you servants, then. Farewell, Ophelia. Remember well what I have told you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the king. Farewell. What is the Ophelia he hath said to you? So. Please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Very well be thought. What's between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? 
You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. And do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I will teach you. Think yourself a baby that you obtain these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or not to crack the wind of the poor phrase running it thus, you'll tender me a fool. He hath important me with love in honorable fashion. I fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. He's giving countenance to his speech, my lord, with all the vows of heaven. I nooses to get woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul lends the tongue holy vows. These blazes, daughter, you must not take for fire. From this time be something scanter of your maiden presence. I would not, in plain terms, have you so slander any moment's leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. A toot, I charge you. Come your way, Cecilia. I shall. Obey, my lord. I will watch tonight. Perchance to walk again. I'll warrant it, Will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be temple in your silence still. And whatsoever else shall hap tonight, give it an understanding, but no tongue. I will requite your loves. So fare you well upon the platform twixt eleven and twelve. I'll visit you. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. Would Owen up? I think it lacks a twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed, I heard it not. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse. Keeps wassail. And the swaggering upstart revels, and as he drains his draught of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? I marry, yes, but to my mind, though I am native here into the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observant. Angels of Be thou. in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet! King! Father! Royal Dane! Answer me. Say, why is this? What for? What should we do? as if it's some impartment did desire to you alone. Look at the courteous action it wasted you a more removed ground. But do not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak. Then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's spear. As for my soul, what can it do to that being a thing immortal as itself? It weighs me still, I'll follow. What if it tempt you toward the flood, my lord, and there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and, and draw you into madness? Think of it. Still I am called. Go on. I'll follow. You shall not go, my lord. Hold out your hands. Be ruled, you shall not, my lord. Unhand me, gentlemen! By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that stops me. I say, away! I'll follow him. He runs as desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Have after. To what issue will this come? He is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Well, thou leave me speak, I'll go no further. Mark me! I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fire, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. <laughs> if thou didst ever thy dear father love, oh, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. <laughs> And the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Leave me to note that I, with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love, may sweep him out of the end. Now, Hamlet, here, he's given out that sleeping in the orchard, a serpent stopped me. So 
The whole year of Denmark is by a forged process of my death rightly abused. Now, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting my father's life, thou as is grown. Oh, my prophetic soul. My uncle. An adulterate beast, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. But softly fix thy scent the morning air. Brief let me be. Sleeping in mine orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thine uncle stole with juice have casted heaven in a vial. And in the porches of mine ear did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with the blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, cut off e'en in the blossom of my sins, and set to mine account with all mine imperfections on my head. Oh. If thou hast nature in thee, bed it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursue safe tact, take not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. As you will at once, adieu, Hamlet, adieu, remember me. Poor ghost, while memory holds her seat in this distracted glow. Remember thee? Yea, from the table of my memory, I wipe away all trivial on the court. And thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with base or matter. Yes, thy hand! Oh. Oh. There you are. Now do my word. It is a chance. Seek her. Hamlet. My lord, my lord. Lord Hamlet. Lord. Let's go. Heaven secure here. Oh, 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 bird. Come, bird, come. Oh, it's my lord. What is my lord? Oh, wonderful. Good, my lord. Hey. No, you will reveal it. I'm a little you then, with heart of man. Once think it, but you'll be secret. I will. There be no thing dwelling at all. Denmark! But he's an errant maid. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Why, right. You are in the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You as your business and desire shall point you, for every man has business and desire, such as it is, and for mine own poor part, I will go pray. This is but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you, partly yet. Faith. Don't think of it. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is an issue, and much offense too touching this vision here. It is an honest ghost, that let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, dear friend, as you are friend, scholar and soldier, grant me one fool request. But it's, my lord, we will. Never to speak of this that you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. May but sweat. Upon thy sword! In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord. Upon thy sword! Well, hold me off, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen, swear by my soul. Well! Never to speak of this that you have heard, swear. Well, oh, day and night, but this is wonder strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth for each shield than are dreamt of in our philosophy. But come, here as before, never so help you mercy. How strange or odd some air I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, that you at such times, seeing me, ne'er shall. 
Sit down and come with us, or head just thus, or by pronouncing us some doubtful phrase. Well, well, we know, or if we list to speak. With such ambiguous giving out, you note that you know aught of me that's not to do. So grace and mercy at her most need help you. Rats. Rats. Good heavens. Now, gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is may be express as love and friending, God willing, shall not lack. Now, let's go in. And still, your fingers to your lips. Oh, no, Philly, what's the matter? Alas, my lord, I have been so frightened. Which what, in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my chamber, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous and purport as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors. He comes before me. Mad for thy love? You don't know, my lord, but surely I do fear it. Mm, what said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. And then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand, thus, o'er his brow, he falls to sit perusal of my face, as it would draw it. It was long feared he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm in fright, his head thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. For that done, he left me there, and with his head, over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way inside his eyes. For out of doors he went without their help, and to the last bended their light on me. Mm, this is the very ecstasy of love. What? Have you given him any words of late? No, my lord, but as you did command, I did return his letters and deny the doctor. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed judgment I had not noticed him. I feared he did but trifle and meant to rack me. <laughs> Come, go we to the king. The ambassadors from <laughs> Norway, my good lord, are joyfully returned. Thou still hast been the father of good news. Have I, my lord? Assure you, my good liege, I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my God and to my gracious king. <laughs> and I do think, my lord, this brain of mine hunts not the trails of policy so sure as it hath used to do. But I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That I do long to hear, and my liege, I know. To expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time, time, or nothing but to waste night, day, and time. <laughs> Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. <laughs> Your noble son is mad. Uh, mad call I it, for to define true madness, what is but to be nothing else but mad. But let that go. No matter with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. That he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity. Then pity tis, being true, a foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then. Now remain to find the cause of this effect. I have a daughter. Have while she is mine, who in her duty and obedience must. Hath given me this. Now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase, but in effect that's it. In her excellent white uh, bosom, these, <coughs> etc. Can you still have to see her? Good madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. Doubt thou the stars are fine. Doubt the sun doth move, doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh, dear lady, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh, best believe it, adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this 
Machine is to him, Hamlet. How has she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a man faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. I went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince. Out of thy star, this must not be. And then I prescript gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no token. This done, she took the fruits of mine advice, and he, the pellet that your tale to make, fell to a sadness, then into a fast, thence to a weakness, thence into a watch, thence to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein he now raves and we all mourn for. And he thinks of this. Take this from this, if this be otherwise. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks for hours together here in the lobby? And so he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an heiress stand mark the encounter. If he love her not, and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep a farm <laughs> and cart. Oh. We will try. But what may the poor wretch come to be? Away. I do beseech you both away. I'll board him presently. Oh, give me leave. How does the good Lord Hamlet? Well, God in mercy. You know me, my lord? Excellent. Well, you are a fish, Marcus. Uh, not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest to me, eh? Honest, my lord? Aye, sir. But to be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of 10,000. That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a god kissing. Carry it. Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. A sub sun is a blossom. But as your daughter may conceive, friends look to it. How say you by that? Still harping on my daughter. Yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. Hey, far gone, far gone. And truly, in my youth, I suffered much extremity for love very near this. I'll speak ere we go. What do you read, my lord? Words. Words. Words! What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean the matter you read, my lord. Splendid, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit together with most weak hams. All which, sir, though I powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down, for you yourself, sir, should be as old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. Oh, this be bad, Mr. Pertwee. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that's out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. A happiness that often madness hits on with reason and sanity could not so prosperously be delivered. I will leave him and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. Mine honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I more willingly will part with all except my life. Except my life. Farewell, my lord. <laughs> Tedious old fool! So draw him on to pleasures, and gather so much as from occasion you may glean were up to us unknown affliction thus. That open lies within our remedy. Mine honored lord, my most dear lord, Excellent, good friend. Oh, dost thou do then, sir? Oh, yours are <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, good lad, how do you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy on fortune's cap. We're not the very button. Uh, nor the sole of her shoe. Uh, neither, yes. my lord. Then you live about her waist. Or in the middle of her face. <laughs> <laughs> face her up private, uh -huh. please. The secret. Heart of fortune. 
Ah, most true. She is a stupid thing. Oh, what's the news? Oh, none, my lord, but that the world's grown up. Oh, there is doomsday near, but your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friend, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison today? Prison, my lord? Then marks the prison. Then is the world one. What good then is our minutes? There are many confines, wards, and dungeons. Denmark being one of the worst. Oh, we think that so, my lord. Well, then there's none for you. For there is nothing either good or bad. But thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. But in the beaten way of friendship, what makes you at Elsinore? <clears throat> to visit you, my lord, in no other occasion. <laughs> Beggar that I am, I'm in poor and sad. But I can't see. Thanks, dear friend. A too dear a half penny. Were you not sent for? Oh. Is it a free visitation? Is it your own economy? Come, do justly with it. Nay, come, speak! What did we say? Oh, anything which is a purpose you were sent for. <laughs> there is a kind of contraction in your looks which your modesty has not craft enough to color. I know the good Queen has sent for you. But to what end, my lord? That you must tell me. But let me conjure you by the rights of our fellowship. Be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Me? Then I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off! My lord, we were sent for. <sighs> what a piece of work is man. How noble in reason. How infinite in fact. In form and motion, how rash and admirable. In action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. And yet, to me, what is this quintessence of death? Man delights not me. No woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Oh, my lord, there was no such stuff in my time. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? Oh, think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what luncheon entertainment the players shall receive from you? We pass them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. What players are these? In those you were want to take delight in, the tragedians of the city. How chances did they trap? Well, did they hold the same estimation they did when I was in the city? Are they so followed? No, indeed, they are not. It's not very strange. For well, my uncle is king of Denmark. And those that would make mouths at him when my father lived for 20, 40, 50, 100 ducats a piece for his picture and little. But there's something in this more than natural as philosophy could find it out. There are the players. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore. You are welcome. But mine uncle, father, and aunt, mother are displeased. In what, my dear lord? I am but mad north, northwest. When the wind is southerly. You're welcome, masters. Welcome all. <sighs> My old friend. Well, they face his valet since I saw thee last. <laughs> Comes thou to beard me in Denmark? <laughs> <laughs> what? I am lady and mistress. 
by Our Lady. Your ladyship is near to heaven, and when I saw you last, by the altitude of a shot pine. Pray God your voice like a piece of uncorrect gold be not cracked within the rain. Oh, masters, you're all welcome. We'll eat you <laughs> like French falconers. Fly at anything we see. Come, give us a speech straight, a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? Oh. I heard thee speak me a speech once. But it was never acted, or if it was not above once, for the player remember, please not. The new <laughs> <laughs> one speech that I chiefly loved. T'was Aeneas' tale to Dido, and thereabout, especially where he speaks of Priam's slaughter. But live in your memory, I pray you begin at this line. Ah, yeah. Let me see. Uh, let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable <laughs> arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, hath now that black and dread complexion smeared with blood of fathers, mothers, <gasps> daughters, sons, and thus or sighs it with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus old grandson. Oh, thank you. Lord, well, well, it was good accent and good Anon he finds him striking too short at Greeks, his antique sword rebellious to his arm lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, but with the whip and wind of his fell sword, the nervid father falls. Then senseless Helium, seeming to feel this blow, with flaming top, stoops to his base, and with a hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus here. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. But as we often see against some storm, a silence in Stand still, the bold wind speechless, and the all below as hushed as death. Anon the dreadful thunder doth rend the region so that after Peter's falls, a rousing vengeance sets him newer work. And never did the Cyclops hammers fall on Mars, his armor forged for proof eternal, with less remorse than Peter's bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Oh, this is too long. It shall be the barbers with your beard. Prithee, say on. He's for a jig or a tale of Baudry where he sleeps. Say on. Come to Hecuba. But who of woe had seen the muffled queen? The muffled queen. Is that who? Muffled queen is From who? barefoot up and down, threatening the flames. A cloth upon that head where late the diadem had stood. And for a robe. About her like an all or demon void the blanket in the arm of here caught up. Who this had seen against fortune state would treason have pronounced. And if the god themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword, her husband's limb, the instant burst of clamor that she made would have made milch the very. Look where has not turned his color and has tears in his eyes. Pray you no more. It is well. I do speak out the rest of this soon. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore. I'll leave you till tonight. I, so, goodbye, you. Now I'm alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of could force his soul, so to his own conceit, that from her workings all his visage wand 
tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice in his whole function, suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do? Had he the motive and the key for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general there with horrid speech, make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the innocent and amazed indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. Not for a father upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain, plucks out my beard? Who does me this, huh? Soons I should take it. For it cannot be but I am pigeon-livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter. For ere now, I should have fatted all the region tight with this slave's awful, bloody body, villain, remorseless, lecherous, kindless villain! <gasps> <laughs> Why, what an ass am I? Oh, this is most brave. That I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by him and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion. Fie, aunt, oh! about my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it have no voice, will speak with most miraculous organs. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll watch his looks. I'll tint him to the quick. If a but blanch, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be a devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Old friend, can you play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. You could, for a need, study a speech of some Twelve or sixteen lines, which I would set down and insert in, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. <laughs> Leave, us Leave us now, for we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear a front to feel you. Lawful the spiles will so bestow ourselves that seeing unseen we may have their encounter frankly judged, and gather by him as he's behaved, if be the affliction of his love or no that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauty be the happy cause of Hamlet's wrong. So shall I hope your virtue will bring him to his wonted way again to both your armies. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Read on this book that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw the note. Remember. Good man. 
My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No. No, I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did, and with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again, for to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lord? But if you be honest and fair, your honesty should it fit no discourse to your beauty. Good beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty. Ah, uh, truly, for the power of beauty can sooner transform honesty from what it is into a bawd, though the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness, as were sometime a paradox, but now the time gives it to you. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our own stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent. But yet, I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in imagination to give them shape or time to act with them. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves all, believe none of us, to a none regard. Where's your father? Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool no weapon in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heaven. If thou just merit, I'll give thee this place where I die. Thou <laughs> as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Oh, thou wilt needs marry. Marry a fool! The wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them to a nunnery go and quickly to. Oh, oh, heavenly powers, restore him! I have made your paintings well enough to. God hath given you one face, and you made yourselves Do another. Not. You image, and you ramble, and you list. You nickname God's creatures, and make your watch in this your ignorance. Go to or no more art! It has made me mad! I say we will have no more merit! Those who have married already, all but one shall live! The rest shall keep as they are! I come sore. Expectancy and rose of the fair state. The glass of fashion and the mold of form observed of all observers. Quite, quite down. And I, of the ladies most dejected, wretched that sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason like sweet spells jangle out of tune and hawk. Form and feature of blown youth blasted in ecstasy. <gasps> oh, woe is me! To see what I have seen, see what I see! <gasps> Do 
love. His affections do not that way tend. Nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul in which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatchling of this close will be some danger. Which for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set down. He shall with speed to England. Happily, the seas and countries different shall expel this seething matter from his heart. It shall be so. But yet I do believe the origin and commencement of this grief sprung from neglected love. How now, Ophelia, you need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. My lord, do as you please. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep. No more. By sleep to say the end, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep, the chance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the presser's wrong, the pangs of despised love, to grunt and sweat under a weary life? that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose bourn no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of a resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment, with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. What ho? Horatio? Still speak, Lord, at your service. Horatio, thou art e'en as just a man as e'er my conversation coped with all. Oh, my dear Lord. Nay, do not think I flatter. For what advancement may I hope from thee that no revenue hast but thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee? Why should the poor be flattered? Since my dear soul was mistress of her choice and could of men distinguish her election, shall seal thee for herself. For thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortune's buffets and rewards obtain with equal thanks. And blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to play what stop she please. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core. I am my heart of art, as I do be. <sighs> Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest that act of foot, in with the very comment of thy soul, observe mine uncle. 
If his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is the damned ghosts that we have seen in my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's tithy. Give him heedful note, for I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face, and after we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if he steal off the whilst the play is playing and scape detecting, I will pay the theft. They're coming to the play. I must be idle. Sit by me. No, mother. He is never more attractive. Oh, oh do you mark that? <laughs> <laughs> Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No. I mean my head in your lap. <laughs> Did you think I meant country, ma'am? I think of nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought to lie between maids' legs. <laughs> what, my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Wow, God, you're only jig maker. But what should a man do but be merry? For look you how cheerfully my mother looks and my father's died within two hours. Nay, for quite two months, my lord. So long. Oh, heavens, died two months ago and not forgotten yet. For us and for our tragedy, here's two pieces to your clemency. We beg your hearing patiently. Never come this side for two hours gone. Madam, how like you this play? The lady doth protest too much, monsieur. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in it? No, no, they do but jest. Poison in jest. No offense in the world. What do you call the play? Of the most trap. This is one Lucianus, Whoa. nephew to the king. <laughs> Hark, leave thy damnable faces and begin. Horse black, hands up, drug fit, and time of year. In better season else, no creature seeing. Thou mixture rank, from midnight weave collected, will that the span thrice last did strike. In festal night, thy natural magic and dire prophecy on wholesome night usurp immediately. <laughs> the play is excellent and written very choice Italian. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king's wife. What? 
sprouted with false fire. Give all the play. Give me some light. Light. Hey! Light. Light. Oh. But some must watch, while some must weep. That runs the world away. Would not this so win me a fellowship and a cry of players? A whole one eye, oh good Horatio, I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pounds, tis perceived. Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of poison. And it's very well note him, my lord. Oh, come, the recorders, give us the music. For if the king like not the comedy, why then belike he likes it not pretty. Good my lord, that's safe me a word with you. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir. Aye, sir, what of him? Is in his retirement, marvelous distemper. With drink, sir? No. My lord, with anger. Your wisdom should show itself more to signify this to the doctor. For me to put him to his purgation will perhaps plunge him into far greater anger. Good, my lord. Put your discourse into some frame and fly not so hastily from my affairs. I am calm, sir. Pronounced. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. Your behavior hath struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. But is there no sequel at the heels of this mother's admiration? In part. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey, will she, ten times our mother. Have you any further trade with us? My lord, she once did love me. Oh, the record has come. Let oh, me see lord, one. If my duty be unmannerly, my love is too bold. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. I beseech you. I know no touch of it, my it lord. It is as easy as lying. Look you. <clears throat> Govern these vintages with your fingers. Give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look you. These are the stops. But these I cannot put to any utterance of harmony. I have not the skill. Why, look you, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play my stops. You would seem to know me. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. And there is much music, excellent voice in this little organ, yet you cannot make it speak. So, do you think that I am easier to be played upon than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will. Though you fret me, you cannot play upon me. Leave me, friends. is the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. Now to my mother. Oh, heart. Use not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. I like it not, nor stands it safe with us to let his madness reign. Therefore, prepare you. I, your commission, will forth with dispatch, and he to England shall along with you. We will ourselves provide, most holy and religious fear it is, to keep these many, many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. Arm you, I pray you, to this speedy voyage, for we will fetters put upon this fear which now goes too free-footed. <sighs> Mine offense. It smells to heaven. It has the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself in brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Whereto serves mercy but to confront the visage of offense? My fault is past. But oh, what form of prayer may serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, 
mine own ambition and my queen. May one be pardoned and still retain the effects. Try what repentance can. What can it not? Yet what can it when one cannot repent? And hearts with strings of steel be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. Now what they're doing back. Now the praying. And so it goes to heaven. I would be scared. A villain kills my father, and by that I his soul sunder this same villain sent to heaven. Why, this is higher and souring at revenge. Up soon, and know thou a more horrid pit. When he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, at gaming, swearing, or about some act that hath no relish of salvation in, then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven and that his soul may be as black and damned as hell whereto it goes. My mother stayed. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go. He will come straight. Look you, lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with and that your grace has screened and stood between much heat in him. I'll silence me in here. Pray you, be round. I warrant you, fear me not. Mother! What's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go to your question with a wicked tongue. What, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? Oh, by the root, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. Would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can come, speak. Come, come, sit you down. You shall not budge. You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help, help. What ho, help. How now? All right. Stand by, Duncan. Stand I know not! Is it the king? It's a rash bloody deed. A rash and bloody deed, almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. It was my word. <laughs> so, wretched, rash, intruding fool! Farewell. Thou find'st to be too busy is some danger. Peace, leave wringing of your hands and set you down. And let me wring your heart, for so I shall of it the great impenetrable stuff. If damned that custom hath not braised it so that it is proof and bulwark against sense. What have I done that thou dare wag thy tongue and noise so rude against me? Such an act. <laughs> that plucks off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and sets a blister I there. I see what act. Look you upon this picture. And on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. 
This was your husband. Look, you know what follows. Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed? And fatten on this moor? Have you eyes? You cannot call it love, for at your age the heyday in the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Oh, don't speak to me no more. I'll turn spine eyes into my very soul, and there I'd be such black and grainy spots as will not leave their taste. Never to live in the <laughs> rank sweat of an inseamed bed, stewed in corruption, honeying and making love over the nasty sky. Oh, speak to me no more. Oh, say it, now for all me with your wings, you hadn't got. Visitation is but to wet thine almost blunted purpose. Look, amazement on thy mother sits. Oh, step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do hold discourse? Gentle son, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper, sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? On him. On him. Look you how pale he glares. Oh, do not look upon me, as with this piteous action you convert my stern effects, that what I have to do will watch your color. Tears protect from no, you. No, to whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing yet? No. Nothing at all, yet all that is I see. No, did you nothing here? Oh, no, nothing but ourselves. Well, look you there. Look how it steals away. My father and his habit as he lives. Look where he goes in now out at the portal. Oh, the very coinage of your brain. Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul. That not your trespass, but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past. Thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Go away from your sin. And live the purer with the other. Go not to my uncle's bed. <laughs> Assume a virtue if you have it not. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For this same Lord, I do repent. But heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this and this with me that I must be her scourge and the mystery. I will bestow the body and will answer well the death I gave him. Bodies for snow, my lord, we cannot get from him. But where is he? Without, my lord, guarded to know your pleasure. Bring him before us. Oh, bring in the lord. Now, Hamlet, where's Polonius? At supper. At supper, where? Mm, not where he eats. 
but where he's eaten. A convocation of politic worms are in at him. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fed all creatures else to fed us, and we fed ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggar are but variable service. Two dishes but to one table. That's the end. Alas. A man may fish with a worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of the fish that hath fed a black worm. What does thou mean by this? Nothing but to show how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where's Polonius? Uh, in heaven. Who sent thither to see? If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go seek him there. Oh, we'll stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed, for thine especial safety, which we tender dearly as we grieve for that which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself. The bark is ready, the wind had helped, the associates ten, and everything is bent for England. For England. Aye, Hamlet. Good. So is it. Thou meet'st our purposes. Oh, I see a cherub that knows him. But come for England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Mother and father is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. So my mother. All occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man of his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A peace, no more. Sure, he that made us with such large discourse gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fust in us unused. Whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple as thinking too precisely on the event. I do not know why yet it is I live to say this thing's to do, since I have cause and will and strength and means to do it. Examples gross as earth exhort me. Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw and honors at the stake. Oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worthy. Follow at foot, tempt him with speed aboard. Delay it not, I'll have him hence tonight. My letters conjure to this stern the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England, for like the hectic in my blood, he rages. And you must cure me, for till I knows tis done, whate'er my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. I will not speak with her. She is importunate, indeed distract. Her moods will needs be pitied. What would she have? She speaks much of her father. Says she hears there's tricks in the world and hems and beats her hearts, burns enviously at straws. Her speech is nothing, yet the enchanted use of it doth move the hearers to collection. They yawn at it and watch the words up fit to their own thoughts. Let her come in. To my sick soul. As seems true nature is, each joy seems prologue to some great amiss. So full of artless jealousy is guilt, it spills itself in fearing to be spilled. Uh, 
How do you, pretty lady? Oh, well, God is you. Say, say we all was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be. <laughs> Conceit upon her father? But thou no worse than that. But when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is daytime drinking, all in the morning be time. And I have made it your window to be your valentine. And up he rose and donned his clothes and up the chamber I door. The in the night, the hour, the night. Pretty Ophelia. Oh, indeed. Love, without an oath, I'll make an end on. By gifts and by St. Charity, a lass can fight for shame. Young men will do if they come to fight, cause they are to blame. Could ye before you tumble me, you promised me to wed. He answered, so would I had done by yon your son, and thou hast not come to my bed. How long has she been lost? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. But I cannot use to weep to think that they would lay him in the cold ground. My, my brother shall know of it. And so, I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, ladies. Good night, good saints. Good night. Follow her coast. Give her good watch, I pray. When sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. Okay. Let air teases in secret come from France, and once not buzzers to infect his ear with pestilent speeches of his father's death. Where's the king? What is the matter? Laertes or bears or officers. The rebel call him lord and cry, choose we, Laertes shall be king. Oh, this is counter, you false daily dog. What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him gird, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. There's such divinity doth head the king that treason can but peep to what it would axe little of its will. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead, Laertes. But not by him. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. But come what comes, only I'll be revenged most cruelly for my father. Why, now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman. That I am guiltless of your father's death, it may as level to your judgment peer as day does to your eyes. as mortal as an old man's life. Hast thou thy wits that didst persuade revenge it could not move thus? Well, you must think. Not down, not down. And you, call him. Not down, ah! Oh, how the wheel becomes it. Did the false steward bestowed his master's daughter? There's nothing more the matter. Here's Rosemary, that for remembrance. Oh, I pray you, love, remember. Well, here's pansies, that's for thought. Here's fennel for you, and columbine. Here's rue for you, and some for me. We may call it a begrace for Sunday. 
So you must wear your rule with a difference. There's the tea. I would give you a violet. But they withered all when my father died. They say I made a good end. For Bonnie, sweet Robin, is all my joy. And will I not come again? And will I not come again? Oh, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He never will come again. This dear was white as snow. A blast and one to fall. He is gone, he is gone, and we cast away moan. God of mercy on his soul. And then all is gone. I swear. Do you see this? Oh, God! Be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. If this be so, his means of death, his obscure funeral, cried if I heard is torn from heaven to earth. But I must call in question. So you shall. And where the fence is, let the great axe fall. I do not know from what part of the world I should be greeted, but from Lord Hamlet. Horatio. Ere we were two days old at sea, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor, and in a grapple I boarded them. On the instant they got free of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am to do a good deed for them. Come to me with as much haste as thou wouldst fly death. So have I, a noble father lost. A sister driven into desperate terms, whose worth of praises may go back again to a challenger on mouth of all the age for her perfection. But my revenge will come. But how now, what news? Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. From Hamlet? Clear, teacher shall hear them. Leave us. High and mighty. You shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall first, asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. What should this mean? Or all the rest come back or is it some abuse? Oh, let him come. <sighs> the very sickness in my heart. How now, sweet queen? My sister is drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh. Where? There is a willow that grows this like the brook that shows its horn leaves in the glassy stream. There, on the pendant boughs, Crowned weeds clamoring to hang an envious sliver broke. And down her witty trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid like a while they bore her up. Each time she chanted snatches of old laws as one incapable of her own distress. Oh, like a creature made to bend and do down to that element. But long it could not be till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Alas, then, she is drowned. Drowned. <laughs> so how? 
you, my lord. I have a speech of fire that faint would blaze, but that this folly drowns it. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now, fear I, this will give it start again. Here's the skull now. This skull is laying you in the earth three and twenty years. It was it? No, oh, horse and mad fellows it was. Who do you think it was? I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flag and a Rhenish on my head once. <clears throat> this very skull, sir, was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. Yes, in that. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Was a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He had borne me upon his back a thousand times. And now, in my imagination, how a poor he is. He hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jives now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? No one now to mock your own grinning. Quite top form. Now get thee to my lady's chamber. Tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Here comes the king, the queen, the court. Who is that they follow with such maimed rights? This doth the token the course they follow to a desperate hand undo its own life. Towards its own estate. Crouch for a while and mark. Very noble youth. My who the earth. The fair and completed flesh may vibrate. I tell the Jewish people that the string angel shall my sister be with a life howling. Wife. I thought thy bride bed to deck sweet maid and not to strew thy grave. Treble, who will fall ten times treble on that cursed head as wicked be thy most ingenious sense deprive thee of. Hold off the earth a while till I have caught it once more in mine arms. Oh. Oh. What is he who is grief best, Tucker this prey the sorrow conjures the wandering star that makes them stand like wonder wounded herons. This is I, Hamlet the Jane! I prithee take my fingers from my throat, but though I am not primitive and rash, yet I have something in me dangerous which must I wipe this year. Hold off thy hand! Fuck <laughs> off from us! Well, I will fight with him upon that theme until my eyelids will no longer wag. Oh, my son, what theme? I love you, Celia! Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quality of love make up my scum. What about you, Father? Oh, he is madly happy. Oh, for the love of God, forbear him. Soon, soon he will suffer. Would weep, would fight, would tear thyself, would fast, I'll do it too. Since thou come here to wine, to outface me with leaping in her grave, be very quick with her, and so will I. This is mere madness, and thus a while if it will work on him. The female does in silence, must it prove him? Here you stand. What is the reason you I did not do that. But it's no matter. Let Hercules himself 
do what he may. The cat will mew, and Doc will have his day. Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to show yourself your father's son indeed more than words? To cut his throat in the church. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence in rapier play and magnify the fame the Frenchman gives you. Bring you in fine together and wager on your head. He being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the foils, so that with ease or with a little shuffling you may choose a sword unbated. And in a passive practice requite him for your father. I will do it. For the purpose I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank so mortal that but dip a knife in it where it draws blood. No cataplasm so rare can save the thing from death that is but scratched with all. I'll touch my point with this contagion that if I gall him slightly, it may be dead. If this should fail, it were better not essayed. Therefore, this project should have a back or second that might hold. I ask. When in your motion you are hot and dry, and that he calls for drink, I will have preferred him a chalice for the nonce whereon but sipping. If he by chance escape your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. So much for that, sir. Now shall you hear the other? Do you remember all the circumstance? Remembered, my lord. Sir, in my heart there was a kind of fighting. I thought I lay worse than the mutineers in the shackles. Rashly, and praise be Rashly's for. For let us know, our indiscretion sometimes serves us well when our deep plots do pull. And that should teach us, as a divinity that shapes our ends, rough you them how we will. Up from my cabin, in the dark, my sea gown scarfed about me, groped I to find out them. Had my desire, fingered their packet, and in fine withdrew to mine own room again, making so bold my fears forgetting manners to unseal their grand commission, where I found Horatio. Oh, royal knavery, an exact command, importing Denmark's hells and England's too, that on the supervise, no leisure baited, no, not to stay the grinding of the axe, my head should be struck off. Is it possible? Here's the commission. Read it at more leisure. But will you hear me how I did proceed? I do beseech you, my lord. I sat me down, devised a new commission. Will thou know the effect of what I wrote? Aye, good, my lord. An earnest conjuration from the king that on the view and knowing of those contents he should those bearers put to sudden death, not shriving time allowed. Now, the next day was our sea fight, and what did that? Was sequent thou knowest already. Why, what a king is this? So Guildenstern and Rosencrantz go toot. Why, men, they did make love to this employment. They are not near my conscience. Tis dangerous when the baser nature comes between the pass and fell and sensed points of mighty opposites. That is most certain. It must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. It will be short. The interim is mine. And a man's life's no more but to say one. But I am sorry, good Horatio, that to Laertes I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. I'll court his favor. But sure, the bravery of his grief did put me into a towering passion. Peace. Who comes here? My lord, the king and queen and all are coming down. In happy time. The queen desires you to use some gentle entertainment. To Laertes, before you fall to play. She well instructs me. You would not think how ill all's here about my heart. Nay, good, my lord. Tis but fuller. If your mind is like anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be not now, yet it will come. If it be not to come, yet it will be now. The readiness is all, since no man knows aught of what he leaves behind, what is to leave the times. Let be.
Tom Hamlet, come and take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. But part it as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard, how I am punished with a sore distraction. What I have done, that may your honor, nature, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim, was madness. Was Hamlet wronged Laertes? Never Hamlet. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge, but in my terms of honor I stand aloof and will no reconcilement, till by some elder masters of known honor I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name ungored. But till that time I do accept your offered love, like love, and will not wrong it. I do embrace it freely. And will this brother's wager frankly play? <laughs> Give them the foils, young Arthric. <laughs> Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Very well, Your Grace. My lord has laid the odds of the weaker side. I do not fear it. But since I've seen you both, and since he's better, we have therefore odds. Are these foils all a length? I am a good lord. This is too heavy. We see another. Send me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, or quit in answer of the third exchange, let all the battlements their ordnance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. And in the cup, a union shall he throw. Greater than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup, and let the kettles to the trumpet speak. The trumpet to the cannoneers without, the cannons to heaven, the heavens to earth, the king drinks to Hamlet. <laughs> Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. One. No. Judgment. A hit. Now come again. Jay. Give me the cup. Hamlet, the scroll is by. Yes, sir. Here's to thy health. Give him the cup. I'll play this spell first. Come. Another hit, what say you? Touch. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Take my napkin. Wash thy brow. Good, madam. The queen carouses to thy fortune. Good. Ah. <laughs> Good, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon. It is the poison cup. It is too late. I do not drink yet, madam. By and by. My lord, I'll hit him now. It is almost against my conscience. <laughs> Come for the third, Laertes, you but dally. I pray you pass with your best violence. I am afraid you make a wanton of me. Say you so? <laughs> Come on. you now. <laughs> Put 
Come again. I went cocked to my own noose, Osric. How does the queen? Treachery? Seek it out! You see her, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. In thee, there is not half an hour's life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand. Unbated and in venom. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poison. <coughs> I can no more. The king. The king's to blame. The point? Envenomed too? Then venom to thy... <laughs> Murderous, damn it, Dane! Drink off this potion! Is thine you need here? Follow my mother! She is justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine? Father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. Wretched queen, Achir. You that look pale and tremble at this chance, that are but mutes or audience to this act. Had I but time, as this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, I could tell you. But let it be. I am dead, Horatia. Thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I'm more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some liquor left. I said, a man, give me the cup. Let go. I have a hat. Oh, God, Horatia. What wounded name, things standing thus unknown, shall live behind me? If thou didst ever hold me in thine heart, Absent thee from felicity, why? And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. So tell it with recurrence, more and less than I've solicited. The rest is silent. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. 
and rights of angels sing thee to thy rest. So shall these bodies, high on a stage, be placed to the view. And let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts. Of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause. And in this upshot, purposes mistook, fallen on the inventor's heads. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. For he was likely, had he been put on, to prove most royal. And for his passage, let the soldier's music and the rights of war speak loudly for him. Go, bid the soldier shoot. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes a field but here shows much amiss. <laughs>